continuing with our exploration of deep water and in particular the stream that I had begun about two weeks ago on change I'd like to share some thoughts on response to change. We had talked about framing of change about two weeks ago and just to summarize we had in general arrived at a developmental model in which there is fullness and space that gives rise to a trajectory of development that is characterized by three phases, the physical, vital, and mental. And as progress happens further in the mental level, then more of the fullness resident below can come to the surface. Now we had used this general developmental model and deconstructed it to arrive at seven types of leadership, seven types of organization, and 13 types of personality. And the reality is that when we consider any kind of causal wedge that is bound by time and space, then within any time-space area, there is always going to be a flux of these different kinds of leadership and organization and personality, and so change is inevitable. And the way that we had defined change, basically based on the seven organizational levels, was that change can be thought of as a dislocation and operational reality, most likely a sudden dislocation and operational reality. And the magnitude of change can be thought of as the shift in the number of layers of operational reality, and we had defined a maximum on the downward movement of four degrees of shift, and on the upward movement of two degrees of shift. So that summarizes how we frame change, change as being a dislocation in operational reality, and the magnitude of change as being the number of layers that one suddenly has to shift through. Now, when we think about response to change, we are going to use a similar developmental model and deconstruct this also. And one can say that certainly there is a natural response, which we could term as physical responses, where we try and keep things always as they are. Or, for example, to get a little more concrete, suppose one suddenly loses one's job, then the response, if one is in a physical orientation, may be to try and get placed somewhere else in the organization in a position that is similar. And if that doesn't work out, then there might be a vital response to change, where one now looks beyond the boundaries of one's current situation. So to some small degree, positions oneself differently to try and get perhaps a similar job in a different industry or a different organization or a slightly different job. But the point is that there's a little more experimentation and the boundaries are pushed even further. And if this doesn't, if this response to change also doesn't work, then there might be more of a mental a reconfiguring or a response from a mental level where one is forced more to think about what it is that one stands for and then approach the market from that perspective in the hope of getting placed, say if one had lost one's job. So these are some common responses to change and sometimes one will find that none of this works and perhaps what's happening in that case is that circumstance is causing this person or this organization to further reinvent themselves, so to give up those fixed patterns that have defined their mental orientation or their vital orientation, the patterns here, or the patterns at the conceptual level. So there's kind of an existential crisis that may arise where one's notion of oneself is being pushed to something different. Now, to the, to the, deg uh, the degree, one, uh, one can say that the degree of giving up these patterns is going to be a function of perhaps what I would call surrender. And that is where keeping in mind that there is a fullness underlying every trajectory of development, if one were to surrender to that fullness, then there is something else 
that may have the possibility to arise in, in one's own trajectory of development and therefore change the way that one responds to change. So if we were to map these four levels, for instance, and surrender is the level of fullness, then one can say that depending on from where one responds to change, so the physical, vital, mental, or some kind of more full level, one's ability to respond to change also increases. Now, it may not be a linear function, but just uh, I'll map it as a linear function. And so one can say that as one shifts one orientation in this manner, so moving from physical to vital to mental to a degree of surrender and fullness, one's ability to respond to change also shifts dramatically. One other thought around response to change. So coming back to our developmental model of possibility arising from fullness. Now this is true not only of organizational development or possibility from a point in space, but also very true of individual development or development of one's personality. And it could be that within a certain causal wedge where one had been acting within a time-space area and assume that one has already responded or tried to change the physical, vital, mental orientations and now is forced to go into a mode of deeper surrender so that fullness can arise, then one can hypothesize that if one were successful in going through this development, then we could say that that fullness might be reinserted in this situation to change it. So circumstance or the possibility in space requires an instrument by which that, that time-space area can change. So that's one possibility uh, of how that time-space area can change. Now failing that or if this time-space area is not quite right for that, then if one were to reorient oneself to arrive at that degree of surrender or fullness, then one can also hypothesize that that might be leveraged in another time-space boundary where both the development of the personality and the environment can happen hand in hand.